There are two types of mindsets. One, a growth mindset, and two, a fixed mindset. A suspected serial killer has been arrested in connection with the heinous set of shootings that targeted vulnerable a killing spree that's How do I know I exist? Do you recall being a baby? What foods do you eat? And what clothes do you wear? What are the things your parents are aware of that you are not? Why can't you remember being a baby? A timeless question that still awaits a conclusive answer is whether you, in fact, exist. Sure, you think you exist. But where exactly are you located? Traditionally, respondents have been divided. Physicalists believe that everything is physical, while dualists believe that the mind and body are separate realms of existence. Physicalists claim that you must be located in your brain or other corporeal substance, but dualists believe that something else floats beyond your body, a mind, spirit, or soul. It is a central dilemma of human life more urgent, arguably, than the inevitability of suffering and death. Awareness of one's own ideas, memories, feelings, sensations, and surroundings Your consciousness is your awareness of yourself and your surroundings. This awareness is personal, it's part of your consciousness if you can express it verbally. Your conscious experiences are constantly changing. For example, you might be focused on this video. Your attention may then go to a past conversation with a coworker. Then you may notice your chair's discomfort or consider cooking dinner. Consciousness is an enigma. Consciousness is... The brain is by far the most complex uh, physical system in the known universe. Well, I mean, what's different about consciousness than anything else, it has its uh, subjective... In the feeling of life itself, Christoph Koch, chief scientist of the Allen Institute for Brain Science in Seattle writes, Consciousness is any experience, from the most mundane to the most exalted. But more than that, Koch continues, it is the feeling of life itself, and without it, I would be a zombie, nothing to myself. Here's the problem, we have no idea, what it is. According to philosopher John Searle in his 2013 TED Talk, consciousness is a biological phenomenon like digestion or cell division. Before we go too deep down the philosophical rabbit hole, cognitive science can provide us with two practical questions. What is the purpose of consciousness, and what does it do? Perhaps the most important thing about consciousness is that it connects to the psychological mechanisms that are getting a lot of attention. This brings them into more focus and makes them more active. Many of our psychological processes go on even when we aren't aware of them. Unnoticed. Being aware of something is awareness. It is the ability to personally sense, feel, or be aware of what is going on. Imagine a physical object that we can touch and feel. This is simply being aware of the object. Touching it reveals the object's shape, size, and weight. The crucial thing is that the person does not need to fully comprehend the object. They may be aware if they perceive it. Consciousness is not limited to tangible objects. An emotion, feeling, or sensory pattern can be noticed. People are conscious of their voluntary activities. Involuntary activities occur when a person is not aware of them. Consciousness is a relative concept. Both words seem to mean the same thing, 
but they differ conceptually. Both words deal with understanding phenomena and are strongly tied to human cognition. Both awareness and consciousness are significant aspects of a person's life. Also, these are cognitive processes that occur in humans' minds. When we think of differences, we can identify that awareness does not require a full understanding of a certain thing, whereas consciousness requires in-depth awareness of a particular thing. We can view consciousness as three distinct levels. The conscious, the subconscious, or preconscious, and the unconscious. The conscious state refers to our present awareness that you are feeling as you watch this video. We employ our conscious mind when we take in sensory information, analyze it, and make judgments based on it. In other words, our conscious mind is what we are aware of right now. It encompasses what we are thinking about right now, whether it is in the fore or back of our minds. If we're aware of it, it's conscious. You might be aware of the information you're reading, the music you're listening to, or the discussion you're having right now. The conscious experience includes all of your thoughts, feelings, perceptions, and memories. The next level of consciousness, called the subconscious, or preconscious, is the stuff from which dreams are made. This level of consciousness is the next level of thought. We can think of it as a room where we keep all of our past memories, the impressions they leave on our minds, and the behaviors that are awakened or reinforced by these impressions. Every experience you've ever had, every thought, every impression lives in the subconscious mind and influences our patterns of thought and behavior far more than we realize. The subconscious stores information just below the level of awareness. Such information is frequently referred to as memories. For example, you could recall your middle name, your father's birthday, and the last time it rained. Memories of past events remain in the subconscious region of our minds, which we may be unaware of one moment and totally focused on the next. What we achieve in life, career, and relationships is often influenced by our habits. Prioritizing and completing daily duties is a mental and physical skill, so through practice and repetition, we can develop this habit into a permanent part of our behavior. The unconscious is the final level of consciousness. This is made up of ideas, memories, and primitive, instinctual desires that are buried deep within us, far beneath our conscious consciousness. Even if we are unaware of their presence, they have a tremendous impact on our behavior. Our actions often reveal the unconscious factors motivating them, yet we can't easily access the unconscious mind's information. Our childhood memories and experiences shaped our views, worries, and insecurities. But we can't recall most of them. Unconscious forces drive our behaviors. For example, you may have forgotten unpleasant past experiences or a tragic occurrence that you pushed out of your subconscious. Some life events or thoughts may be too disturbing for some people to fully acknowledge, requiring preconscious or subconscious mind mediation. Freud's iceberg theory uses the imagery of an iceberg to separate these three levels of consciousness. Similarly, an iceberg can help us realize how much of ourselves we choose to openly share with those we connect with daily. Consciousness, which includes our current thoughts, can be seen as the tip of the iceberg on the surface of the ocean. What can be retrieved from memory makes up the preconscious. The middle section was known as the preconscious or subconscious, and it was the part of the brain that was sometimes recognized and sometimes was not. This is demonstrated in Freud's iceberg by it being right at the water level and bobbing up and down above and below the waterline. The unconscious holds a wide range of significant and disturbing material that we must keep out of awareness because it is too threatening to acknowledge fully. It is like an iceberg, but most of it is under the surface of the water when it moves. Only a small part of the whole is visible above the surface. The biggest and most important part is hidden below the surface. We all have parts of ourselves that we show other people, but the bigger parts of ourselves are often hidden away, and no one can see them.